Hello everyone, this is Robin Carter and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator out of Flower Mound, Texas. And today I'm here to share with you some alternates I made using the May 2023 Exploring in Color Paper Pumpkin Kit. So I have enjoyed doing alternates with the full card bases. And uh, if you missed that video, you can go to my channel and then under videos, it'll be the one right before this one. But before we get started, let me thank all of those who have subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much for your support. And those of you who give me some encouraging comments, I really appreciate those as well. So before we get started, I want to share with you some business, but be sure and tune into this whole video as I like to share tips along the way of other things I do as far as supplies. So uh, be sure and stick around for those. So some business we need to take care of is the June 2023 Paper Pumpkin Kit. The subscription period is going on now. And if you are do not already have a demonstrator, I would appreciate if you would subscribe through me. If you have a de uh, demonstrator, I'm sure he or she would appreciate your subscription. Also know that you can purchase prepaid 1, 3, 6, or 12 month subscriptions. And when you do that, those also can help qualify in receiving hostess rewards when your purchase is $150 or more. Now, if you are going to purchase $150 or, or less than $150 merchandise, I would appreciate if you would use my host code and you will receive a small gift from me for doing that. If your purchase is over $150 and you do not have a demonstrator, I would really appreciate if you use myself, Robin Carter in Flower Mound, Texas, and you will still get a free gift from me. So as this uh, flyer shows that this June paper pumpkin kit will coordinate with the countryside in suite or countryside corners. So I have the annual catalog here from Stampin' Up! It's for April 2020 or May 2023 through April 2024. And you can find the coordinating products for this on page 60 and 62. So there is a stamp set and dies. Um, you can either purchase these two as a bundle. And when you do that, you save 10% and you would use this bundle number, which is 161472. Now, if you want to get the stamps, the dies and the coordinating paper, and I believe the embossing folder, then you would per you can purchase it using one number as a suite. So right here, da, 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 designer series paper. Yes. So it shows that you get the bundle, the paper, which is 12 by 12. And you also get the countryside blossoms embossing folder. And you can purchase all those items with one number, which is 161474. So I pre-purchased those items so I can show you what they look like. So here they are. This is one big stamp and I'll explain that in a second. And that way you don't have to worry about um, aligning these up. They will coordinate with these dies perfectly. Okay, so there's the stamp set and then there's the dies. Now this is a set of seven dies. And here's one of my tips. I like to store these with a strong magnet. And I've listed these magnets in my favorite things, which I try to include on the descript in the description box of my YouTube channels. But if I run out of text, you can always go over to my blog. And in my header, there's a uh, link that'll get you directly to my favorite things. So these magnets are there. I like to store them in the plastic sleeves they come in. And then I like to write how many dies are here so that I'm not having to look for this little bitty number every time I put away a die set. That way I can count them, make sure they're all there, and then put them away. The other thing I like to do is lab make a label. Now, in the past, our dies were called something different than the stamp set, but I really like now that they're calling the dies and the stamp set the same thing. But I do like to put the name bigger that way. I store them alphabetically in a little tub because these can make nice labels and they're not necessarily uh, exclusive to just this using it with this stamp. 
So that's what I like to do with my dies. And then I'm going to put this back in the case because I keep misplacing it. <laughs> I don't have any stamp sleeve to put this in yet. So also with the June kit, there is an add-on of some dies. They're called the Welcome In dies. And these are $6 through the online store. They're not in the catalog. And the item number for it is 163192. Now they are $6 plus shipping and tax if applicable tax is applicable to you. But it'd be kind of silly to purchase $6 and spend $7.95 on shipping. So maybe you have some friends who um, would like to get this as well and you can go in together and split the shipping cost. Make a, uh, have your demonstrator can do a workshop order as well so that each of you can do that and send it locally to one person and then that person can hand it out to everyone. So that's an idea. You do have to be a Paper Pumpkin subscriber to purchase these. Oh, let me show you what they look like. So it's a set of three dies and I put just a strip of magnet on there. So it's a die to cut out a vase, a flower, and then a leaf. Now the leaf is standalone. They did tell us that there's not a stamp to cut that one out, but these two will cut out some stamped images. So that would be nice to have when we get that kit. As I said, I keep misplacing this. So I, for now I'm sticking it in the coordinating stamp set. And once I make a sleeve for that, I will stick it in with those stamps. Okay, so also if you are a paper pumpkin subscriber of mine, you will receive a little uh, sleeve. Now I'm going to use this later. So if your stamp set fits in a small one, I put it in a small one. Uh, this month doesn't fit in the small one, so I did a larger one. You will also receive a one inch square of the coordinating cardstock so that you can store that on the bottom of the ink. So this is crushed curry. Um, you can see I put the one inch square there and that way I can store my spots upside down and the ink will stay on the top of the pad, much like our full size pads, how we when you flip them, the ink is stored upside down. Okay, so before I get to the alternate I'm going to make you, I'm going to show you some things I did with the my first set of alternates. I jazzed them up just a little bit more. Let me get them out of the sleeve here. So on this one, I added some glossy accent. Now, Stampin' Up! used to carry the shimmery but they discontinued it and I just have some old, I don't even know if the bottle looks like this anymore, probably not. This is very old, glossy accent. So I don't know if that shows the shimmer. Let's see if I can, but it makes this river kind of come to life. It gives it a glossy finish. So that's something I did. Now, if you do that, you need to do it before, <laughs> before you're done crafting, set it aside, let it dry overnight. Um, otherwise you will smear it and then also for the envelope I put it the coordinating stamp set with the color that I did the background so I show exactly how I made these alternates in my first alternate video on my YouTube channel get this back in there keep it protected from ink okay this one I added the two dies and I probably need to take it out of the card protector or it's going to get shiny. So this one I added the baby deer and the mama deer and some tips are to give them an eye and give them a nose. And this comes from the grassy grove set. I did not have it but I borrowed it from a friend and it uh, the dyes are from the grassy grove dye dyes. Oops and they're not in here because I've been using them. But um, she likes to store hers with the stamp set. In this case, it probably makes sense because I don't think there's any other stamps for just a label or whatnot. So that is where I got the deers. Or deer, I guess deer is plural in itself. And this one, I did the boho blue um, for that one. So I really liked how adding those deers made that image come to life a little more. And so I did the same thing on this one. I added the two deer because there were only a few buffalo in the background. And then I added that glossy X 
distance to my pond or yes back there trying to make sure it shines for you so I've added the glossy accents to my favorite things as well which are on my blog or if I have room I put it in the description box of this video okay two more that I have for you I believe these use the add-on and I want to show you this card so I just cut it out using the deckle die um, and then I use a new stamp set that I like it's in the new annual catalog and let me find it for you it's on page 67 of the annual stampin up catalog so I really like this stamp set it has so many nice sentiments and some labels that I've used on some of my cards for this month and so um, here is the timeless arrangements dies it's missing one or two labels that I'm using they're over by my stamparatus not my stamparatus my <laughs> my um, die cut die cut and emboss machine and then these are the stamps so I'll try to get the glare away so as you can see some very nice sentiments some greenery flowers I think this background is nice now as you can see these images are not 100% they're 90 so they're a little bit bigger than as they show here okay so I took one of the dies and this is not the one but let me show you what they do so when you cut this out it gives you a nice little uh, panel that you can attach to your label you can even turn it if you need to trim that off because it's sticking up you can always do that or you could simply just trim off the leaves or flowers that you like and attach them to your card so that's what I did here I added this one excuse me and to get it at the angle I wanted I did have to trim just a hair of the post off but it makes it really easy to glue these leaves on there and I cut those with mossy meadow cardstock I added birds and the birds I have used throughout this whole these alternates is from the April 2021 paper pumpkin kit and I have it over here I have so many things I wanted to share with you that I have stuff all over. I'm sure they will show up. Well, they need to show up, but I'll keep going. So let me show you something interesting with this. So this just did the whole scenery. Um, I wanted to see what it would look like. I would have obviously put the whole panel of M Moody Mob. This was the other side of the card. So let me slip this in here excuse me so which do you like better do you like it with the moody moth behind it or do you like just the whole scene it's kind of interesting that kind of takes away a little bit of the leaves but I like it it helps the net stand out so you can choose that's just an alternate I did with the add-on cards these were also still available in the online store under if you're a paper pumpkin subscriber you can get these uh, set of cards and this one I did do I put the boho blue side and I put that glossy accents all over the river that one's really shining the birds and I simply stamped my sentiment right there on the card this is one of the labels from the timeless arrangements that I used and it just happened to fit that stamp pretty perfect okay so those are just some simple alternates I did using some add-on cards and then I showed you how I jazzed up my other cards from the first video and now I'm here to create my alternate with you so let me clear some of this stuff away so some products you will need to make these I guess it's not a necessity but it makes it much easier are the masking paper right here this came out um, in Stampin' Up! a year or two ago, and you may have missed it. 
but it's on page 151 of the annual catalog. It's called Masking Paper, and its number is 155480. And so you get a uh, package of 12 of these, and they're this size. So they have a nice score where you can peel it apart. So the alternate I want to share with you today is with the mountains. Now I have made alternates with the other envelopes, but I am saving those. So if you haven't seen my blog sidebar, um, last month I got invited to join the Paper Pumpkin Possibilities blog hop. So I accepted. I was excited and honored to do that. And so on May 31st is when everyone's going to post their alternate for this kit. And it happens at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. So I will share, I'll be sharing what I did with the other two envelopes on that blog hop post. So if you're not subscribed to my uh, WordPress blog, you may want to head over there after this video. I'll have a link and subscribe. That way you'll get an email when that uh, post goes live. And then I will have a next button to share the next person's link so that you can check out all the alternates. So everyone should do that and it'll lead you to each person's alternate. So I'm going to save those for that. So be sure to check that out. So as you can see here, I've used the Ray of Sunshine stamp set, or it's just a stamp. So I used this stamp back in the February paper pumpkin kit and I really liked it. So it's in the annual catalog. I can show you that as well. I should show you all these things at once, but you may not know what they're for. Did I peel off the thing? No, it's that orange one. Okay, so it's in the section that shows all the background stamps. And it's right here. Its item number is 158925. It's called Ray of Light. I think I didn't call it that when I said that's what I use, but that's what I use. It's right here. But um, before we get started, we need to cut open this envelope. So I'm going to get my trimmer and give you some tips when you cut. So when you cut, you always want to put your paper in the direction you're going to pull your blade. So for the side of the envelope, I'm going to be pulling down because you want it to press against the bar of your trimmer. So just a small sliver off of that. And then since I'm going to be cutting this way, I'm going to want to cut up. And this helps. So if I were trying to do this down here or something like that, it would one, make your paper, it, your paper could wiggle. Um, so I always want to push the where your blade is pushing your paper into the solid piece. All right, and then we're gonna trim off this flap right here. And I'm gonna cut just off, hopefully off, of where it's scored, because that can um, fray often. Looks like I did pretty, really good not getting any mountain. And you need a sharp blade. So if you start getting a fuzz, First check to make sure your track is clean. And the next thing you do is you may need a new blade put in your trimmer. All right, so I'm gonna trim this just at the mauve point. Save that, you might wanna add some detail to your label or something. <clears throat> so I'm not gonna trim this down yet because it's gonna give me some room to tape it down while I do my stamping. Now I have that stamp on my Stamparatus and I know the Stamparatus, sadly, they had to quit carrying it due to some legal issues. But I know a lot of my customers have this and my uh, class has it, so I'm gonna use it. But if you do not have a Stamparatus, you're brand new, you haven't done this before, then one thing that you will need is this big block. It is block, E or F? F. <laughs> it's hard to read that. So it's huge. As you can see, here's my hand. And it fits these big background stamps. So I'll show you what you could do if you just had this in a moment. 
But here's our mountain, and as you can see from my alternate cards here, I'm going to want to put it where the mountain's coming up, or you could say setting, whichever way you want to do through the mountains. Now, as you can see, you're going to probably get different results unless you do all three at once. I did not. So, so we're going to do this just like it's your first one. I have some tape here. And what I'm going to do is tape this down. Just cover up a little bit of it. The magnet is too um, big. So this is just regular scotch tape. And that's why we didn't trim it down so that we can put this on there. Now I'm going to pretend like I've never used this. And by the way, this is my mask that I cut from the masking paper that I can use over and over. Now, I accidentally ripped it last time I took it off, but we're going to make it work. So, you know what? Let me turn this around. It's going to be hard to do sideways. So I'm going to put my masking paper back on there. Now, you can use some vellum to trace your mountain scene and then cut that out with your masking pa uh, paper beside it. That would be what I would suggest. I used my scan and cut <coughs> to do it. But if you didn't have a scan and cut or just wanted to do it without using that, then you can um, use some vellum to trace your image and then cut out your um, image. Now, be careful when you're placing this. See the ray of light? It has extra rubber on each side. So you wouldn't want to just slap it down and then only get some of your card. So even though we want the mountain coming, or the sun coming from the mountain, we want to be sure we get most of that card, even though we're going to trim it down. So let's see. That looks good. I have the mountain coming, or the sun coming up right there on the mountains. And I know I'm going to trim that down. So I'm going to put this one down, see if I can get closer to one of these. So I'm going to close this and lift. Now if you just have the block, what I would suggest is you put your stamp on there, ink it up really, really, really well, and then take your uh, envelope front and set it down gently, <laughs> okay? And then you want to hold it in place and then rub that ink without moving it. So if you have a ray roller that would work as well but you don't want it to move okay you could use your hand and just press really really well and you'll want to keep doing that because the envelope paper I find is uh, kind of slick it takes longer for the ink to dry as you'll see in a moment when we stamp so that's what I would suggest if you do not have the stamparatus get this big block and by the way there is a bundle of all the blocks I didn't mark that, but surely we can find it real quick. Let's see. I should have marked that one. I did, when I first started, I did purchase the bundle of the blocks. Let's see if there's an accessories index. It used to say stamp, yeah, stamp set index. There used to be an accessories index. Kind of. <laughs> it's very summarized. Okay, ink and coloring, markers. Well, you know what? I will find that and I will put it in the description box of my video. I don't want to take too much of your time. But the whole, you will get one set of every block and it saves you 10% if you want that bundle. They are available individually for purchase. So let's get going, and you may or may not know this tip. You can set a stamp set case back there, and it helps hold up this plate. Mine's going to be a little wonky because I have some other stamps that I was playing with on the other side. So I'm inking up my Ray of Light stamp with Daffodil Delight ink. I think you could use Crush Curry. Um, I don't think I would suggest the new... Lolly Lemon, probably be too light. Didn't try it, so <clears throat> I do not know. But I'm inking this really, really well because I really want to do this in one stamp. Okay, 
I'm going to close that and I'm going to press. Now I can tell you already, you really need to press where your masking paper is because it lifts up the stamp a little bit. But the good thing is, since this is a rubber stamp, we get a little bit of cushion that we can smoosh it into. And I know from experience, you got to leave this sitting there for a while so that the ink absorbs. So what do you guys think about this while we're um, <laughs> letting it sit? And by the way, I don't know if you, I shared, but I love these little um, 5x7 Velcro envelopes. I store all my card components in here um, if I'm partially finished or ones that I'm going to share with you guys <clears throat> online. I try to get all the components in there which I know there's not a card base. So let me grab one. When I'm not feeling very inspired, I sit and just cut me a lot of white card bases from thick white paper. So once it there's, you score once, cut once, and I score at four and a quarter and cut at five and a half. And this gives what I call the book fold cards. If you want them to flip vertically, then you just switch those. You would score at five and a half and cut at four and a quarter. I think I said that right. <laughs> so let me go ahead and burnish that while we're waiting. All right, let's take a peek. Don't move. It looks really good. So I'm just going to set it down one more time, try to give, get all the ink off. So as you can see here with the masking paper, you, you don't necessarily get right up against the mountain. I guess I could have scooted my mountain, I mean my mask down, and it would have, have stamped closer. But I kind of like this look. It's almost like it's um, a shadow, not a shadow, but a highlight of when the sun comes off the mountain. It's kind of really bright right where the edge is. So I actually ended up liking that. Okay, so let's say that's done. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to clean my stamp and you can see it's still wet. It doesn't absorb very quickly. So if you have a heat gun tool and you're in a hurry, you could zap it to help it dry. I'm going to do a few other things while this continues to dry. I'm cleaning up. So here's a tip for your chamois. So this is only half a chamois and I've even cut the half and half. So as you can see, the first thing I did was clean it with the damp paper towel. Use the funny sound there. But I do that first, that way this doesn't get as inky and I need to clean it off as quick. Plus I throw this over the top because here in Texas, it's warm, so the air is blowing. I usually have fans on. I've turned it off for this video so it doesn't um, make any weird things. And now I'm going to carefully peel off my mask. Now you can save this and use it. I don't know how many times you can, but this will be my third time using this. And I accidentally tore it one time, but I think it, it worked out where I could still attach it. Okay, so we're gonna set this up here, get this out of the way, and we'll let it dry while we stamp our sentiment. So I was looking for a sunshine sentiment, and that's what I found in the February 2023 paper pumpkin named Sunshine and Smiles. I love this kit, it's, it's very, very cute. And if you miss my alternates for it, I have um, several, I think three maybe, um, videos of alternates I made with this kit, including the envelopes. So I think I already have the sentiment on a block. I do. I use the Wishing You Sunshine and Smiles. So I'm gonna use Memento Tuxedo Black ink for my sentiment. You know, you could use, if you notice here, there's some little trees and greenery. Could use one of those. 
colors. You could even use the Copper Canyon if that's the only ink you have. Well, if you have this stamp, then I know you have another ink spot <laughs> that came with this one. That was Mango, I think. Which retired. I've said that one retired. Okay. Hopefully I didn't get my head in there. I'm trying to center it. Let's see how I did. That's good. And this label comes from the Meadow Dyes. And the Meadow Dyes is what um, I used those in my first set of alternates. So I thought I'd continue using the same dyes for a little label. I don't know why I tend to not use the labels that come in the kit first because I'm afraid, you know, I'm going to run out because I make so many alternates, but I'll probably use those on my, when I finish out my other card. Okay. If it's making you dizzy, close your eyes. I'm just going to fan it a little bit. I can do it off screen there. So you don't have to <laughs> watch it flap. Um, you just want to make sure it's dry. And here it is. So here is the stamp set that I'm going to use for the birds. It's a paper pumpkin kit back um, March 2021. So if you've been a subscriber for a while, you have you'll have this set. If you don't, you know what? These are so simple. You could probably just take a black marker and kind of make birds if you want birds on your card and don't have this. Oh yeah, here's a set, but I already have them on my teeny tiny block. This is the A block. Okay, let's see what color we want to do. This one I did the copper clay. This one I did in basic black. I think, hmm, it's hard to decide. Which one do you guys like better? I'm going to go with black again, I think. Okay, and then make sure your birds are flying the right direction. I made a boo-boo during my first alternate and had to do a correction. No one would know it except you guys who saw the video and I told you what I did to cover it up. Okay, so there is our birds. All right, trying to keep everything, our work area clear. All right, so I'm going to get my uh, card. Now here's a tip. When you make your own, I think even when I've bought some, they may not be like perfectly cut in half. So one side could be slightly bigger. So I just pick them up and if I can pull up the back half or top half, which seems like this one is, then that's the one I want on front. Because if you were to see any of the back, it doesn't look as good. So there's just a tip on that. Oh, we need to trim this. They were probably like, hello, that's going to be too big. Let's get our cutter back out and let's see if how much we have to cut. So it looks like we could, could we still do an eighth? I think we can. Let's try it at four and one eighth. That works. So this one I had to cut at four. This one is at, at an eighth. And then just kind of ends up where your stamp is. And this one, since that was four and an eighth, this can be three eighths. I want to trim just a hair off this side to make sure that the, all of that is has the ray of light on there. And then five and three eighths. So when you're looking for the eighths, the biggest mark is your inch. The next size is your half. The next size is your quarters or three eight or three quarters. And then this one is your eighths. The teeny teeny tiniest one are sixteenth. So you want to go to five and a half and then find your eighth marking, which is two, two over for three eighths. Who knew you needed to be really good at math for card making? <laughs> Not really good, you know, just keeps your mind sharp. All right, so the other thing with envelope paper is it's really, really thin. So you may want to use tape runner. I am going to use my multi-purpose Tombow glue, but you don't want to use very much. You just want a fine line. 
whoops, hello, start going off. And here's a tip when you get some kind of at the very, very, very edge, like I did there. Whoops, can't pick it up. All right, let me just, if you get it at the very, very, very edge, you want to start here and then push it. That way your glue goes more into the card. Pulled my hand away like a hot potato, but. All right, so I do like the liquid glue because it gives me wiggle room to center my card. And that one is not moving, but it's close enough. I'm gonna be happy with that. That was just a smudge of glue or something. All right, and then we get our sentiment, and as usual, I'm gonna put that on with dimensionals. And with my big dimensionals, I cut them in half. I find that that's still plenty of room. And you know to use all the way around your dimensional. You just cut into it. Okay. All right, so here is our wishing you sunshine and smile. So I've actually done all three of my envelopes, yay. So this is my alternate. Again, I will be using the other alternates in my blog hop post, which happens on March 31st at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, or excuse me, 8 p.m. Mountain Time, seven o'clock my time. And uh, if, if you are wanting to follow the blog hop, you go to my blog. I will have my pictures and descriptions of my alternates. There will be a little pumpkin that says next in there. So you click that next button. It'll take you to the next member of the Paper Pumpkin Possibilities blog hop and so forth. They will have the same thing. So be sure and check those out. I know it's kind of late in the month, but um, that's what it is. So I'm saving the other two alternates for that. Um, please give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what you think about this alternate. And if you are new to my channel, I kind of like to hear where you're from. You don't just give me state or city and state, something like that. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave me a comment below. I do read my comments and reply to them. So if you have any comments, you can do that as well. If you know people who, your friends, subscribe to Paper Pumpkin and may not have found this video, if you'd please share it, I'd appreciate that. So until my next post, which if you guys want to see the video of my other ones, after the blog hop post, I can do a video of that one as well. I've even thought of going ahead and making it and then having it go live soon the day after the blog hop, but I'm not gonna promise that because it needs to be a surprise and it needs to lead you to the blog hop so that you see everyone's posts. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed these alternates as well as the uh, other ones I showed how I jazzed them up. I did the glossy accents on the pond. I used the timeless arrangements there and I did the pond and the deer. So that's how I jazzed up my first ones and then I did some with the add-on kit. So, all right, that's it for me today. Thanks for joining me. I hope you made it through the end of this video. Thanks again.